I was kind of looking through the old scores with him, and we'd scored 90, I think, last three or four games against him, mid-90s. So I told him if we got to 100, I was going to check into the game. I hadn't played in, since high school. But I didn't have enough time. We didn't get there until like 25 seconds left. So, But, uh, no, it's fun. it's fun to watch the ball go in the basket. And I don't care who the opponent is. At some level, you still have to make the shot. And so we made a lot of shots against man early and then against zone late. And I think that builds confidence. If you're a shooter and it starts going in and everybody was making them, you start feeling good about yourself. So in that regard, it's a real, real positive moving forward that guys that might have been struggling with their shot have now got good confidence in it as we head into this big stretch of, in November. Uh, rebounding wise, we got to do better, obviously. Uh, defensively, we have to continue to grow. And we know what a- areas we need to work on. And, and we're getting better. But the question is, are we getting better fast enough to deal with this next level of competition we're going to face? Uh, we scored 100 points, and everyone was like, wow, that's fantastic. I think Gonzaga in their first three games is averaging 95. How is that possible? They play in Arizona State and Baylor, and it's, it's common for them to score this many points. You know, we sit in here, it's like, wow, that's incredible. And now we got to play a team that scores that many every night. So we have to find a way to not allow that to happen in this building. We have to be uh, hard-minded and tough defensively and rebounding, and then we have to produce enough offense to find a way to get a win against a really good team uh, next Monday. Coach, right, quick update on Miles Bird. Uh, you know, at the very end of practice, I think it was two days ago, he came down and landed on a foot and turned his ankle. Uh, the hope is he'll be back by Monday. Now, whether that happens or not, he's in a boot, and it's, it, it's bothering him right now. So we'll just treat him and, and hope and pray that he'll be available Monday. Now, whether he is or not, uh, that depends on how quick a healer he is. We won't throw him out there injured, obviously. It's a November game, and we have a – uh, a big season to play for. But if he's healthy and ready to go, that will be a huge plus for us because obviously Miles is a dynamic player and this is going to be an important game. Now with Miles and Reese out, and you have three players with 16 points scored, how much does that add to, again, like similar to last week, we're not one player is making the plays, it's all over the collective. How much does that add to the team chemistry over the season now? Yeah, well, I mean, it's, it's good. That's why these exhibitions, all these games are good because – to see BJ put 20 up at 28 at UCLA, you know he can score. So we know he can score. And Wayne was a dynamic scorer at USD, so we know he could put it in the basket. And then you had Nick Boyd. So we have a lot of offense still out there. Even though we lost two really good offensive players in Bird and, and Reese, uh, we had guys that we brought in that have uh, proven they can score at the college level. So I was comfortable that we had enough offense out there with those guys out. The thing you don't have is when you – step up in competition is the length. You know, Reese and Miles do the same thing these other guys do, but they're 6'6", six, 6'5", six, six, they're longer. You know, so sometimes that length makes a difference in a game. So we'll, we'll be happy when we get them back and get that length back in the lineup for certain games. For, with Miles, is it, is it a situation where you'd like to see him practice before you put him out there against Gonzaga? Or if he, he hasn't practiced and then all of a sudden says, I feel fine, Coach, are you going to put him out there? Yeah, if he's ready to play, I'll put him out there. I mean, I don't have to see a lot of practice. And that's because he's a third-year guy. You know, he's been in the program. We kind of know what to expect from him. So he's a guy that, you know, sometimes when the older guys get hurt, they don't fall as far behind because they've already played in the program. They know how we do things. And now it's just getting healthy. And sometimes they come back and they got fresh legs. And that's a huge advantage sometimes. So we'll try to get them healed up as quickly as we can. And like I said, it probably truly will be a game-time decision depending on how quickly – the rehab goes on it. You know, it's hard to think he's going to play, but that's the beauty of not playing for six days. You know, he's limping around. He couldn't play tomorrow, probably couldn't play the next day. But how quickly uh, the swelling goes down and he gets some mobility back in that ankle, uh, we won't know until we go through the process. Wayne, Wayne was not known as a shooter um, for most of his career. Guys would go under screens with him pretty regularly, and, and, and he's been shooting the ball really well. He's 4 7 tonight. Um, he's shot it well. In, in other instances as well. What, what's the transformation and what do you see from him? Yeah, I mean, he shot a lot of step-in threes, you know. He plays a lot of point guard at USD. He plays point guard for us sometimes, and so the ball's in his hands, and he's shooting on ball screens. And sometimes it's harder to shoot behind a ball screen. 
but he's shown that if, if you get him into a step in three where his feet are set and he can step into it, he makes them. So he's a dangerous shooter. And obviously we know he's a great mid-range scorer, but he adds a three to that. He's going to be a hard guy to guard. Does it give you confidence in playing him at two off the ball? Yeah, we're going to play him off the ball a lot. You know, Nick, and, and but we've got him working a lot. You know, he missed some time with that hamstring. And so he's trying to catch up at the point and learn all the plays. And, and, and as easy, it sounds like they're easy to learn. Once you get out there and start running at game speed, uh, you know, sometimes you forget where you're supposed to be. So the more we get him out there running in practice, the more comfortable he'll be, he'll be in the games. And like I said, we put in a new zone play today. We worked on it two days, got lost in it, didn't know what we were doing. It's different in practice than when the lights come on in the game and you got so much on your mind, you forget. So that's why it's, it's always interesting where coaches drop something in a timeout and you think it's going to be successful. You know, we got stuff we worked on for two days and we forget it sometimes. So it ta everything takes time. And so the more time Wayne spends uh, running the point, the better he'll become there too. After a big win like tonight, how do you plan on carrying on the momentum into next week's game? I wish we could have saved some of those threes, you know, put them in the bank and brought them back out against Gonzaga. So we just have to, sh I mean, shooting the ball. I mean, I was, I mean, how can you not be happy with the way we shot the ball? I mean, everybody was shooting it. Chemo and Wayne and Taj and, and uh, uh, Nick shot a couple in and, and Magoon, you know, so it wasn't just one guy. We had multiple guys making threes. And that's the great equalizer in basketball. If you stop, start making threes, you can beat anybody. So I'm sure that will get people's attention the way we shot the ball today and maybe get them a little closer to us where we can drive around them. Where does a game like this fit into kind of the overall stretch of the season or maybe what were the goals going into tonight? It's a good game because when you got all the new guys we're playing, it's just another opportunity for a dress rehearsal. You know, I felt comfortable we were going to win the game and that's no disrespect to Occidental. You know, we have a, a, a high level division one program and and they're stepping up a weight class, and they do run good stuff. They run Princeton offense. They're well coached, and they play hard as heck. But you could see what difference the length makes at the rim with Magoon blocking a lot of shots and stuff like that. And so it, it was good to play against that type of offense with our guys and to get back cut to, you know, our press is still not good. You know, we're picking up full court, but we're not real productive to continue to work on that in game situations. So anything you can get with a game situation in front of a crowd is a good thing for uh, uh, preparing yourself to move forward. Following off that, do you prefer that these dress rehearsal games are very early in the season like they were today, or would you prefer them to be right before conference league? Uh, I think you have to balance. I mean, if you're playing a stretch where you got three or four really hard games and you like a game maybe with a opponent that's not as dangerous. If you happen to lose a couple, get back on a winning track. Feel good to see the ball go in and win again. But we don't have that luxury, you know. Those four games that we play are then followed by a, a conference road game. So this is a this is a this is a real basketball opportunity for us, but it's also very dangerous. So we got to see if we're up for that challenge. And if things don't go right, how quickly we can bounce back from disappointment or how we handle success has a lot to do with the team. How you handle success and disappointment, and we'll find out either one of those two trails as we head into these next four or five games. What is it that you're trying to challenge Magoon with as far as his play and what you would like to see from him? Just be a better defender, sit down longer, you know. I think we found out that, you know, if we play him in four or five minute stretches, then we probably need to give him a rest, you know, instead. I don't think right now as a, a freshman, you know, in his first year of competition that we can think he could run out there for 10 or 12 straight minutes. You know, I think he gets tired because he's chasing all over the floor at seven foot. And we tried to play him at center today. Even though they were small, we played him at the center position instead of guarding a, a four man on the perimeter or a guard. We put him at the center and let Jared guard that guy. So we mixed it up a little bit and move, maybe moving forward, he'll play the centers that we play because he can block shots. So it's still a work in progress deciding where and when we're going to play guys and how much stamina they have and how long they can go. And that's all stuff we're learning now. I want to talk about one of your freshmen today, Taj. He was contributing all, contributing all over the stat sheet today. What does a game like today mean for his progression? 
We knew Taj was a great passer. That's why we recruited him. You saw some really good passes today. And we also recruited him and told him that you've got to become a better three-point shooter. You have to step in and take and make threes. And he was four for seven. So he went into his senior year knowing that, committed to us early, and worked on it. And you could see the work has paid off. You know, defensively, he's playing harder, longer. And then uh, rebounding, I challenged him down the stretch to get an offensive rebound, and he got a put back. He's a good defensive rebounder, but I think he's big and strong enough to do a better job on the offensive class. So there's always things you can get better at, and we continue to teach, and they continue to learn, and hopefully we all continue to get better.